Back in early 2015, I fell in love with the chateau I found online. I then had to convince my other half to give up our London life and move to rural France. To my surprise, she said yes, and a year later said yes again at our wedding at the chateau we now called our home. It's just us two and our husky lightning. And now, of course, a few animals who seem to have joined us along the way. It's such a beautiful place to live, so we decided to share it with everyone. It's obviously a lot of hard work for just us two. It's not always a fairy tale, and we don't always get it right. But it's all fantastic fun along the way, as we bring this chateau back to life for others to enjoy as much as we do. Follow us, Angelina and Phil, along with the highs and lows of our Chateau life. In this week's episode, um, Phil does a quick little interesting project that is very dear to his heart all by himself. And I just end up um, painting the rest of the furniture um, that needs freshening up on the sun terrace to complete the look. And uh, well, right now, Lightning's enjoying a little um, boat in the moat moment with myself. Uh, Phil is actually gone back to the UK and um, for work and earn some money. So it's just me for the next few days and lightning. So enjoy this episode, guys. <laughs> Today I have decided to do something which I've been wanting to do for quite a long time and it's something dear to my heart um, and you just kind of overlook these things quite a lot when you've got all sorts of other things around you. So I decided it's time to get it done. I obviously love history. Uh, you couldn't be in a building like this if you didn't love history. I particularly like family history and I'm obviously, if you look back at some of our previous videos I've shared a little tour and trinkets and stuff that we hold on to. I think that's fairly evident that I uh, obviously like history. And I'm very proud of my grandfather and, uh, and his history uh, and our family history with it. So what I want to do today is, uh, as he's no longer with us, I would like to put some of his medals and cap badges in a nice little 3D frame on the wall along with some other photos of his. So it's time to do that finally. And I'm lucky enough to have found a 3D frame at a, uh, at a charity shop quite cheaply. It was empty, it was kind of broken, so we're going to put everything in it and make it all pretty and put it on the wall. Here is my grandfather. A photo from when he was out in Korea. Here's a painting, or drawing, shall I say, of, uh, of him on leave in Japan when he was out in Korea. That he had done. I have that on the wall, obviously. And here's another one, similar sort of time, although I'm not really sure where this one came from. Again, it's on my wall. So now I'm just going to add the medals and uh, a little photo all on this wall as well. So I've got this, which is a, a broken old 3D frame. I've got some material to put in the back of it, which will hopefully make it a little bit nicer. But what I really want to do is sort out these, which is some cat badges and his career medals. So this is uh, when he was in the parachute regiment. I'll avoid that one. Uh, here's his, these are identical. These are his medals from Korea. This is his dog tag. And the, this little oak leaf down here is to go with the Korean War medal to, uh, it signifies that he was mentioned in dispatches. So. There was actually a mention in various paperwork going back to command at the time. We'll never know what that was for. However, I'd like to display these in something nice as a case rather than just leave them locked up out the way in a drawer. First up is we're just going to cut a piece of material 
to go in the back of this frame. There we go, doing pretty good. And thankfully, I've got Angelina's upholstery scissors here. We hopefully won't have to tell her that I use them. This is obviously a rough cut. I'll trim it down in a minute. As we all know, I'm not the creative one of this dynamic duo. <coughs> So this is going to be a lot harder for me than it would be for Angelina, so I do apologise. But it's, if it's something dear to my heart like this, I feel it should be me that does it. Okay. Just going to... Yeah, do you know what? I like that. I do like that. Yeah, we've been pretty good. That's the idea. Nice lighter colour. So that's what we're going to start with. Okay, so we have this box and this material I just want for the backing. So, a bit of spray glue. Let's, let's deal with that. do I'm going to put this in against one edge because once it's in and down I'll use a standing knife to cut the edges nice and flat I think I'm starting this project, no, it won't be perfect, but it means more to me not being perfect and me doing it than Angelina doing it and it being perfect, if that makes sense to you guys at home. I hope it does. Okay. That's the general idea. And I like it. But now, how to arrange everything. Just trying to work out where everything goes. I kind of, I think I like that. Obviously nothing's lined up right now. I think I kind of then like those there, those there and those there. Obviously, you know, straight. Mm, let's play with that, I think. I'm starting to think maybe that's better. The problem is I really like symmetry and it's impossible to have any in this instance. Maybe. Maybe that's a bit more like it, I think. What I'm gonna use is a dab of a hot glue gun on the back of these, because all this metal 
same as on the back here. If I hot glue gun it, it's easy to take off, you're not damaging anything, which is obviously very important, but it'll hold it. Whereas anything else won't quite work right. Time for a hot glue gun. If anyone's interested in this sort of thing, an eagle eyed viewer might notice that that's the king's crown on the top rather than the queen's. It does differ. That's showing the age as he was in that regiment before Queen Elizabeth was, uh, was in power. And let's just, before I put these in, let's just show you these. And of course, these are just the miniature versions, which are very cool. Really need new ribbons at some point. I think they should have those, but in the meantime, let's get them dressed up. And for those that have watched way too many American movies, at a certain time, we did not have these square dog tags. We had round. So that was his dog tag. Just blank. Let us begin. And gently. There we go. Let's put it right the way around so you can read it. Okay, dog tag. They were the easy bits. Not that I'm sure they're particularly well. That's done all right. That sort of stayed there. Oh, you know what? Time for more. Be more generous with glue, Philip. That's gone quite solid, that's drying. Do you know what? Oh, oh, it all stands upright and stays there. I like it. So here it is. I'm quite happy with that end result. But of course, you never finish until it's actually hanging up. So where are we gonna put it? or shall I say have put it, is our staircase. Now I love this staircase. I love all of our wonderful memories all up it. So here we go. The ones I've told you about before. My sister's wedding, my boat, that one. Our wedding. And now it's here next to a hand drawing of the chateau. Now, I get to see this every day, and here it is on display where it should be, as opposed to locked away where no one can see them. I'm quite happy with that job. I'm back here in my workshop um, videoing the next uh, project of these three bar stools which were out there earlier. These have been there for years and each year kind of repaint to look after them etc. But actually these have been neglected for quite some time. You can see some of the paint has completely come off the, pla the rest of the places it has um, chipped away. Now the biggest problem that I have at the top on these ones, so it's going to be slightly more of a repair on these, is that the tops due to the weather conditions left outside in the scorching sun and then we had like a weird really really wet um, summer and uh, wet sort of spring as well. It caused the uh, wood to separate and now I tried to put clamps and see if these both squeeze in to um, uh, 
uh, to, to get rid of this gap. And then I, I was planning on putting glue and then keeping them squeezed in for 24 hours. But it didn't seem to make a difference. They're solid and they are just, you know, are unable to, to um, uh, get rid of that gap. So what I'm going to have to do, my um, alternative is to use a wood filler again. Um, and this one will be a long set at 24 hours because it is exterior and I want it to be the best quality filler that can withstand the outdoor temperature changes and the moisture content as well. So I'm going to do that first before I actually paint them. One of the first tasks that I'm going to have to do is plane it down slightly and sand it because this ridge not only has come apart created but it's also lifted that wood and so I plan to sand it down in order to have it flush against each other and then fill it along. Thought I would try with this planer, see how that goes. Oh yeah that seemed to be doing it. Look at that! It just comes out there. All you need to do this is a bit of elbow grease. Now I know how Pinocchio was made. Now I planed this down and it's pretty almost flush. Let's get rid of any dirt in between those gaps. And then what I plan to do is to sand it down. It's pretty smooth now. Do it again. It's a lot smoother, that's nice. It's quite a big gap actually. That's like a three millimeters or so. Okay. So that should be ready. It's solid. Next, I need to do these. I just continued to sand and plane the wood down until it was ready to be filled in next. Now that's all done. I'm now gonna fill it with wood filler in between the cracks. It's perhaps too much, so just pressing and squeezing it. All that's left is to continue filling up those cracks with some wood filler. You'll know when the filler is dry and ready when the inner lines, the deepest part, are all the same color. You see how this one's uh, darker? Yeah, they need to be all very light colors. And, um, and then you'll just need to quickly sand it down before you begin the painting. So I'll leave that for 24 hours now. Whilst these chairs are drying and waiting for me to sand it down and paint next, I thought I would start with finishing off our sign. In episode 11, you saw us carve out this beautiful sign for our chateau just out of a tabletop that we had, and it came up beautifully. Then we painted it white and gold, and it came out absolutely stunning. And then following that, in episode 21, we hung it just outside our gates. This is the arrow this size would be perfect for anyone to see. So all I've got to do is 
um, prime it with wood primer because this is exposed raw wood so I need to do that first then paint it and I thought I'm not gonna go as deep um, of detail as we did with the sign because the sign is pretty special I thought I'm not gonna be carving the arrow out but instead I'm just gonna stencil it uh, on top and then sort of paint the golden outline onto it so it'll look exactly the same the only difference is that it's not going to be carved into the wood so this is what i'm going to get on with it's pretty nice thick wood pretty similar to the other one this is a uh, plywood and um, it's treated but i obviously will apply primer on this so let's get on with that now before I do that, I thought I'll show you what the white spirit looks like after I used my special brush cleaning. So it's been two days and this is all the white spirit that I've poured back out of the bucket where I was spinning um, the pigmented dirty uh, white spirit into. And look how clear it is. Look at that. It's incredible. So. I'm going to be reusing that because this is good stuff and it's good to go. So I'll set that on side here. It can be nice and safe and begin with this. Now, I know you're going to be wondering why am I doing this on top of chairs and not on top of, you know, like cardboard or whatever. But I've still got to sand the chairs, the plaster away and any flaking paint. So it doesn't really matter because I'll be painting them over with the right color. So. It really is irrelevant at this point. If it was perfect furniture, yeah, I'll have it up on my uh, trestles, standing up and everything like that. But here, I'm just not bothered and I just wanna get on with it. I'm pretty limited in space given how many projects I have here to get on with. So um, one a day really does start to clear it all away. So here's a regular wood primer. It's in a white color which is pretty standard. The primer goes on quite thick and gloopy. It's quite hard to spread it around, but I'm just working small sections at a time. Well, that was quick. Now this is drying too. It's got pretty long drying time. All primers are pretty much have that. So I'm just gonna let that overnight uh, dry as well as the bar stools and then come back tomorrow. That gives me time to relax, prep and plan for something else. Just wanted to quickly say for anyone who's got questions what a primer is, even though it does look like a paint, it's not actually. It does have obviously a color to it, um, but it is a chemical, um, sort of a special chemical composition, I guess. And basically a primer is a bit like glue. It's very gluey like, it's quite thick applying it. It's a bit like cream, so it's not quite that easy to spread it around as, as paint would. And what it does is it takes raw surface and seals the top of it, a bit like glue would. So it sort of creates a film, but it does go slightly deep into the wood as well. So when you do paint, you don't waste a lot of paint um, going into the wood and disappearing. What would happen if you didn't use a primer on a raw wood? You start putting your lovely expensive paint on it, or whatever paint, and then it just disappears because it just gets sucked into the wood because it's so dehydrated. It just wants to be hydrated with paint or whatever. And then you end up putting a second layer and a sec the same thing happens and you keep doing, you know, layers and layers and layers before you know, it'll be four layers later and you pretty much just about starting to get color onto your furniture, your piece of wood. So that is the reason you have to use a primer. Now, there is also something called that undercoat. An undercoat is essentially, if you have rough surface and it, there's dinks and this and that, and you don't really want them to be shown as much, and you want it to be smooth, you use an undercoat on that. That's basically under any coat of paint. So it does look good. A bit like if you had a rough wall and you put sort of lining wallpaper, it will smooth out the wall surface. Now you're doing the same thing using undercoat. So that is the reason those things are handy to have around, 
but you kind of don't tend to use them that much um, because obviously it's only certain projects or a certain type of wood that it's for i.e exposed raw wood that's never been painted before but it is definitely a good idea to have around the house in a smaller tubs or maybe if you do lots of projects then hey go for the big one so there's your little height knowledge now that's explained a little tip given let's get on with cleaning the brushes with my favorite tool yay cleaning the brushes is as easy as one two and three that's it it can be easier and more straightforward now it's next day and paint is dry and so is the um, filler underneath so let me just remove that to one side okay so the plaster looks really great and all I now have to do is sand down with really fine sanding paper or a sponge which I prefer so I have a bunch of different sponges different um, coarseness so I'm going to use the lightest which is what do I have here over 200 so that's great just to lightly remove the plaster here's a close-up of what I'm doing I'm just literally removing any of these coarse bits and after a while it'll be absolutely flush and smooth Now all three have been sanded down smooth. They're looking great. And also obviously the seeds have been sanded, therefore primed for the gloss paint to come on afterwards. But I'll leave that until last moment. I'm gonna concentrate on the bottom. Now these two don't really have any paint left on them. It's all been stripped away. To be honest, when I got them, they were pretty badly painted. And this one is the only one that has some resemblance of paint left on it, but it's flaking very easily. So I'm just going to sand it down with a, um, a sponge sander that I have, which I prefer because it goes around all the grooves very easily and it obviously sponges down. This one's a hard one, so um, it's um, 40. Sanding sponges are really inexpensive and therefore really good little things to have around the house. Once that's done, I just need to hoover up so that I can clear the area where I'll be painting in. After the three chairs were painted white gloss, I started to paint the arrow sign white gloss as well. Whilst I'm working here in my workshop painting away, I asked Philly to change a handle for me on my workshop door. Let's have a look at it. Hello Philly, can you show us the handle please? Oh, can you go on and just give me a second? It's a bit fiddly. There we go. Let me see. Look at that. It's much better than before. Thank you so much. Continue. Michelle. <laughs> Thanks. This was the previous handle on this door. I think this is much better. The next day, once everything was dry, I began making the arrow for the sign outside. It was pretty straightforward and I had a few designs that I played with and I just got on with it using a Sharpie and then started to paint it in gold there afterwards. I did have to adjust the design slightly and make the end of the arrow bigger just because it looked a little bit odd otherwise. Anyways, it was great. I love my favorite gold paint. It's very shimmery. It does look a bit brown um, in this light, but fear not, in the outside sunlight, it looks shimmery gold. It looks amazing.
This side looks amazing. I just have to wait for it to dry so that I can protect it further before I hang it up. Next, I've got to paint the tops of the chairs. The bottoms are all lovely and gloss white and the tops need that fresh new color. We'll have to do two coats and then apply some marine varnish once I have some so they will be protected for the rest of the winter and underneath a cover. Look at them, don't they look lovely? A light blue color. Can't wait for them to dry so that I can put them outside to match the rest. And that's it for this week's episode. Hope you've enjoyed Phil framing his grandpa's medals. Me and Lining are here having a swim in the boat in a moat, um, <laughs> exploring everything that's around and all the nature. Um, uh, Phil is obviously working away in UK at the moment and I'm not sure when he will be back, but um, yeah, we need to earn money and <laughs> that is what we do. And um, I will continue to paint the furniture and uh, get all that mixed and uh, matched together so that it looks wonderful for the winter and for next year's events that we look forward to. Uh, meanwhile, me and Lining are going to be enjoying some more of the swim and we see you guys next week. If you do like our channel and you're new to it and you are interested in all the things that happen in a chateau, how to run it, how we run it, what it takes to run and all the projects that we make, please do hit the subscribe uh, button and hit the bell for all the notifications. Are you going to subscribe, Lightning? I think so. Uh, he's already a full-time subscriber. And if you like any of the tools that I've used or I keep shoving or any of them in previous videos, go hit those links and um, get those for yourself um, so that you can make your lives easier. As you can see, they help us out to complete our top, uh, projects very, very easily. A special thank you to all our patrons and copies purchased. It really helps the channel to get stronger stronger and better with the equipment that we do purchase for the channel. You saw me get a microphone. Phil's microphone is on his way to improve. We've obviously uh, got software and new computers. So hopefully you are enjoying the content which has come a long uh, way since episode one and early, early weeks of that. So we'll see you guys next week as always. Take care of each other. Lightning, come and say bye bye. Come, come on. Come on, that's a good boy. Say bye bye. <laughs> See you guys next week. Bye. Is it lightning?